The third round of the 2014 Season 3 Club UK and Ireland Skip Barber Championship sees drivers head over to Donington Park set on the border of Derbyshire and Leicestershire. Today, drivers will be taking on this racetrack for 15 laps as one of the UK's premier racing circuits plays host to the third round of the championship. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Will Vincent here on Racebot TV. Don't forget, you can follow me at Will Vincent on Twitter, facebook.com forward slash I am Will Vincent as well if you like to keep in contact throughout the course of today's event. Qualifying is taking place right now and we'll get your qualifying times as it's done on the side of your screen. You can see that Simon Povey is currently leading the way in qualifying with a time of 1 minute 44. 0.469. Um, Simon Holbert is all three tenths of a second back as it stands right now. So a lot of work to do for the pack as we are into the second half of qualifying. You can see 10 minutes and 25 seconds on the play clock as drivers continue to circulate on the racetrack. Let's check in with your overall leader. That is Simon Povey provisionally on pole position. There you see him on the racetrack in that number 78 car on an outlap right now attempting to go a little bit faster than he has been so far in qualifying right behind Povey you've got the number 44 car of Simon Holbert you see Holbert actually diving down to the inside and getting himself a little bit of a toe as they work themselves through the chicane and Holbert himself having a good run so far as I say though P2 is all he's been able to show for so far he's going to ride a long board with him as he comes down towards the final corners on the racetrack. No, he's not. He's going to look through that right-hander. Now he's onto a shortish straight away. And he will get ready to complete a lap here. And for some of these guys, they've got to make sure they get themselves a good qualifying position. It can be tough to pass here at Donington Park. As you see now, Holbert coming down to start another lap. His last lap time, a 144 point. Five, six, seven. As he works himself down the weak off straight down into Redgate turn number one. Let's have a look at his lap time. We can see their current lap time. Just working himself past the 20 second mark up to 105 miles an hour. As he works himself down the crane of curves down towards the old hairpin, which is turn number four coming into that right now. Then after that, he'll make himself a left hander as he comes underneath Starkey's Bridge, turn five, then turn six, and then. The next right-hander will be McLean's turn number seven on the racetrack. Two right-handers in a row. Turn number eight is Coppice. Dear spinning car just ahead of Holbert. Just able to avoid that there on that run down into Coppice. He'll come out of that corner. They work himself down into Starkey straight. The longest straightaway on this racetrack. And then after that, just a couple of more braking zones for him. That will be the first one down into the S's. Turn number nine. Then he'll come down into Melbourne, which is the slowest corner on the racetrack. You can see here, just moving himself to the left-hand side. In fact, Holbert going off there, that is going to be his lap done. He will get himself back onto the racetrack, but this lap will not be counted. Simon Holbert has also fallen down into third place because Sebastian Job is your new provisional pole position leader. We'll stick with Holbert for just one moment, but that lap, as we say, will be invalidated. So Richard Avery then just bringing his car out of pit road. He's going to start a lap in that number 25 machine. He currently classified in fourth place. He'll have the opportunity to do a couple more laps in that number 25 car. And he will have to try and find a bit of a hole. You can see he's slowing down there at the end of pit road. This is just to allow all the cars to go past him. He wants to get himself a nice gap before he comes out onto the racetrack. Now you see Richard Avery is going to come out and start a lap here. Um, of course, he'll do a warm-up lap, and then he will give himself a flying lap. Currently sat fourth place in qualifying your top five. It is 
Povey having just taken that position back away from Job. They see him last time by 1 minute 44.126. Going faster than Sebastian Job by three tenths of a second. Job is in second. Holbert in third. Jarvis moving up into the fourth position. Richard Avery moving down into the fifth spot. Then it's Clark Williams, George Lambert, Raheem Antonides, and then Dominic Brennan and Mercer rounds out your top ten as it stands right now. Let's ride along board then with Simon Povey as uh, so he's now got that pole position back as he works himself down into the S's once again. Running a little bit wide though there for Simon Povey. That might invalidate his lap time. He has got a cushion though of three tenths of a second as he works himself down into Melbourne Hair in turn number 10. From here just a very short stroller where you can see that you will have pit entry on your left hand side. As it will be right about there. These drivers are ready to come onto pit road. And then you've got this final corner, turn number 11, which brings you onto the front straightaway. So let's see, Povey comes across the line, 1 minute 44.823, slower lap time, but it does count. Sebastian Job, there you see him, last lap time, 144.042, back into provisional pole position for Sebastian Job in that number 13, Leo Bodner car. What Simon Holbert doing, of course, we know that he's on a lap. He remains in third place for the time being. 1 minute 44.771, his last lap time, as he's working himself through that far section. The crane of curbs down into the old hairpin once again. A little bit further back, George Lambert's actually been able to move himself up into fourth place. We've got a spinner behind him, and that is this guy right here. And that was Cam. Um, Balutska baby, um, sorry, I'm going to say that again. Sam Baluks Bassi in the number 74 car. Going to bring that car back out onto the racetrack after a crash. He'll only have a couple more laps now to try and set himself a time. Got another spinner down at turn number one. That's that guy right there. That is Alan Jeffrey in the 05 car, currently classified in P20 out of 34 guys trying to make the field here at Donington Park. Jeffrey's last lap time of 136.313. Of course, he will now have some issues as he'll have just about two more opportunities to get a lap done here at Donington Park. Your top three are still scored on the racetrack. We are checking in with P4. And look at the amount of traffic there is right now as we're riding on board with George Lambert in that number 31 car. You can see there is a lot of traffic behind him as well as we look from the rear of Lambert. And these guys need to find a little bit of clean air. The draft will help him down these long straightaways, however, as we look back to the front of Lambert as he works himself through turn number 10, Melbourne corner, then that short run up to turn number 11. Nicely on the gas there for George Lambert. You can see he's actually going to slow that car down, so he's going to allow some traffic to go past him, and then he's going to try and use the next lap as a flying lap. So then, Sebastian Job back on pole position, but the gap now between Povey and Job is just one tenth of a second. There you see Sebastian Job. We'll zoom in on him as he is on an out lap. Um, his last lap, this is a timed lap. There you see, just completing the first 35 seconds of this event as he works himself through turn number five. Once again, riding on board with Sebastian Job. So then Job working himself now through McLean's down in towards Coppice Corner. Turn number eight on the racetrack. This long straight away for Sebastian Job. And the good news for Job is there is absolutely no one behind him. A clear track for Job. This will give him all he needs to try and extend his gap as he works himself down into the S's again. Really using that curb there in that IRL um, TV Leo Bodner machine. The number 13 car working himself down towards Melbourne Corner once again. His time to beat is a 1 minute 44.042. Simon Povey is still scored on the racetrack. Simon Holbert is also scored on the racetrack right now. Each of them trying to do faster laps in the dying moment of qualifying. We'll stay on board with Sebastian Job through the final corner. Here he comes. Working himself out the final corner. Sebastian Job, this is not going to be a fast lap. We don't think the answer is going to be no, he's not. Just a little bit slower there. 1 minute 44.115 for Sebastian Job. 
Simon Povey just doing a lap. He is not faster. Simon Holbert also in that mix there as well. So we're going to have a look from the rear of this guy, Simon Holbert. You can see he's running in third place in qualifying overall. We'll have maybe just one more lap after this one to try and get himself further up on the starting grid. Holbert scored in third place right now. Povey in second. There's five tenths of a second separating these two drivers. Holbert needs to hope that Povey doesn't try and hurt this lap for him as he continues along on the racetrack. There you see Holbert just behind. You will see Simon Povey. There he is on your screen. He's going to ride on board with that guy sat in P2 right now. Simon Povey, he is on a flying lap. He will get the use of this toe down this back shoulder. You see a little bit of slow traffic just coming back onto the racetrack. One minute and change on the play clock as they come back down to the S's. Good run that time, actually, for Povey through the S's. Of course, he needs to just make up one-tenth of a second. This draft will help him. If he can get himself a good breaking down into Melbourne Corner, you see he does get himself a good breaking. Now he's just got to make sure he can nail that final corner. Turn number 11. Simon Povey looking to try and out Sebastian Job on top of the timing screens. Of course, we'll keep an eye out on Job as well because he is just coming past the start of finish line. Will he be able to improve on his time? The answer to that question is going to be no. But the question for Simon Povey, will he be able to improve on his time? The answer to that one is no. Also, just a 1 minute 45 point. 054. One more lap to go for Povey. One more lap to go for Simon Holbert as well. So there you see Sebastian Job coming past start finish line. His last lap time, that was not a timed lap. This is it now for Sebastian Job to try and hold on to pole position. Your top three drivers are on the racetrack. Five seconds left on the play clock. The checkered flag is out. Whatever lap these drivers are on, this will be the last one they are able to do. A little bit further down the field, you've got Clive Armstrong circulating on the racetrack. Currently running himself in the ninth position. Last lap time, a 1 minute 45.5. 388. Compare that to his fastest lap of the race. Just a couple of attempts of a second slower in qualifying. So he's going to try and use this final lap to move himself up the field. But he goes off. So that will be qualifying over there for Clive Armstrong. Back to this Povey and Holbert. And I'm just having a look actually. And Holbert is actually now ahead of Simon Povey. Povey will still get that draft as they work themselves down into the S's once again. This could be a critical time. He's going to ride on board with Simon Holbert running in that third position. Provisionally in qualifying, looking to see if he can get a little bit further up through the grid. Through Melbourne corner there for Simon Holbert. Looked as though he was a little bit wide that time by. That might hurt him, of course. He's got Jarvis just about one one hundredth of a second further back as Holbert works himself down into the final corner. What time can Holbert do? What time can Povey do? The answer is going to be Holbert will come across the line. 1 minute 44.623 does not improve his time. That is qualifying done for him. Povey doesn't improve his time either. Just got a couple of people left as it stands on the racetrack. We have got Chris um, Fraser right now doing a lap, working himself towards the final corner. Currently classified in the 18th place. He has got himself literally just one corner to go as he comes down into that final corner will Chris Fraser be able to improve his time as he works himself past the start finish time the answer to that question is I don't think he will a 1 minute 45.9 uh, 149.391 stays in the 18th position so then ladies and gentlemen to run through your starting grid here from Donington Park it is going to be on pole position here today Sebastian Job, qualifying time of 1 minute 44.042. Simon Povey will line up alongside him on that front row of the grid. Simon Holbert and Mark Jarvis in row number two. And then in row number three, we're going to have George Lambert and Clark Williams. Then you've got yourself George Wiseman, Richard Avery on the fourth row of the grid, Clive Armstrong and Fahim Antonides in row number five. Dominic Brennan and Rob Green in the sixth row of the grid. Then you've got Mark Mercer, Jonathan Mayclock in row number seven. Robert Plumney and Sam Baluska-Bassi in row number eight. Sam Everest and Chris Fraser in row number nine. Peter Cohen, Rich Jones in row 10. As the rest of qualifying coming up on your screen, we are just about one minute away from the start of the 15-lap race here at Donington Park.
There you see 34 cars lining up to start this race. These guys are on the race grid. They are getting set to go racing. There you see your field. And what a tight field it will be for this race. Qualifying just about two seconds separating all of these drivers. You see just actually at the rear of these fields, these guys actually are having to start at the final corner. Literally in the middle of turn number 11. But any moment now, those lights will go on on top of the Eisen.com gantry. We are getting set to go racing for 15 laps today here around Donington Park. There is your pole sitter, Sebastian Job, in that number 13 car. Will he be able to lead the way all 15 laps or... Will that 78 car, the number 44 car, take it away from him? Light on top of the gantry. The third round of the championship will start. Right now. There you see a good start there by Job. That number 78 car is going to be rolling alongside him though, as they come down in towards turn number one for the first time. They are going to be three wide back as they come down into that first corner. But it is going to be Job who leads the way out front. Having a look through the pack, we have got a little bit of contact at the rear of the field. A little bit of beating and banging, but everyone is able to get through those first couple of corners of out serious into them as they storm themselves through the crane of curves for the first time. There you see Sebastian Job out front, but Simon Povey is looking mighty close right along board him as they work themselves. Under Sharky's Bridge, down into turn number six. Now down into McLean's for the first time. Povey right on the rear of Sebastian Job. And you see getting a good run through turn number seven. There is your top field. You've got a couple of cars off at the rear of it. And that is a very close battle. You've got one car with a little bit of rear wing damage as they work themselves down into turn number eight. We'll try and figure out who that is in just a couple of moments' time. But your top 20 drivers all through without into them. But Sebastian Job has got a lot of pressure right now from the rear of Simon Povey as they work themselves out of the S's for the first time. There's your gap. Four tenths of a second on the racetrack. Battle for P2 and 3. Also holding up here, Simon Holbert right on the rear of Simon Povey. Your top 10 drivers separated overall by about... We're second and a half on the racetrack as they come down into that final corner for the first time. Mighty close race. And that 44 car has got Mark Jarvis right behind him. Let's see if he can make a move as they come out of that final corner to complete lap number one. Riding on board with Mark Jarvis. Not quite close enough there. Into turn number one. Mark Jarvis remains right now in that fourth position. Uh, it's a little bit further back. Field is starting to settle down just a little bit. Not real action, but we have to go right down the field. Eddie Stevens, so you see him in that multi clad number 11 car, working his way down in the 25th position, trying to close up to the rear of Sam Everest in that treble 7 car. However, for Eddie Stevens, up five places since the lights went out to start this race, we work ourselves on lap number two of 15. Out front, your battle does continue though. Simon Povey, Sebastian Job battling for the overall race lead. And there you can see the gap between your top two drivers. It is mighty close to ride back on board with Simon Povey. So this is your best passing opportunity, really, down into the S's. It is a chance where you can make a pass. Povey not quite close enough though as they come down. Getting out of the gas just a little bit as they work themselves down through the S's. Povey still running in P2 but your race leader is Sebastian Job leading. Since the lights went out at the start of this event. There you see your race leader. Then you see P2. P3 just in the background as well. So we'll zoom that camera out. You can see a little bit of passing going on. George Lambert looking down to the inside as they work themselves now out of Melbourne Corner. And George Lambert side by side racing with that number 24 car of George Wiseman. Looking as though Wiseman will have the inside line into the next corner. But will Lambert be able to do the crossover out of that final corner? The answer is going to be no, he's not. So George Lambert will lose that position coming out of the final corner. So we'll get that ticker running along the top of your screen. But Job leads away now by half a second over Simon Povey. Simon Holbert runs himself in the third position right now. Mark Jarvis in fourth. Clark Williams in fifth. 
George Wiseman, George Lambert, Richard Avery, Clive Armstrong and Dominic Brennan round out your top 10 as it stands. A little bit further down the field, Alan Jeffrey is battling with Jonathan Maycock in this battle for P15 on the racetrack right now. There you can see the gap, just about four tenths of a second as it stands on the racetrack. Maycock trying to hold off Alan Jeffrey and for Maycock. Down one position since the lights went out to start this race. There's a car uh, very sideways behind. Let's see if we can figure out who that was. I believe that was Martin Mew. We'll get ourselves a replay of that. Let's try and figure out then what happened to Martin Mew. And this was working himself, I believe, out of turn number five. Let's see if we can go on board and see what happened. This is actually working themselves now on the exit of the Craner Curbs, the old hairpin, turn number five, turn number four coming into even, the old hairpin, you can see just getting loose there, that's going to push him very wide, having to save that car, Martin Mew down in the 17th position on the racetrack. Clark Williams having a little bit of a battle right now. You've got Peter Cohen right behind going side by side. Battle for 13th, 14th position on the racetrack. Clark Williams is able to make up a position, but mighty closer as they work themselves out of Melbourne corner. As we'll have a look on board with Peter Cohen in that Club 100 car. Going to look to the outside as they come down into that final corner. Not going to get that job done, however. That Club number 100 car is running himself in 14th place right now. Does get the draft down the front straight away. Not going to have the able to have the inside line down into that first corner, however. Richard Avery involved in a battle right now with George Lambert, Clive Armstrong. These guys are battling for P7, P8, P9 on the race right there. You see George Lambert as we ride on the rear of him. There you see the gap to Richard Avery. Three tenths of a second. Behind there, you can just see at the rear of your screen a gaggle of cars as they run in P9, uh, 10 and 11. Dominic Brennan, Mark Mercier, just two tenths of a second separating those drivers right now. There you see that second pack. Look how close these three drivers are. Mighty, mighty close racing down in your mid-pack here as they come down into Coppets once again. There is the number 37 car as he works himself. That's Clive Armstrong. Dominic Brennan right behind him. Mark Mercier right behind. We're going to ride on board with Mercier in that Club 100 car. Running himself in the 11th position in that number 33 car. So work through the S's once again. So down into Melbourne corner they come, line of turn they remain, those top uh, drivers running themselves, P9, P10, P11 on the racetrack. Simon Job, by the way, has been able to pull out now to an 8 tenth of a second gap over Simon Polvey, but we have got Simon Holbert there, you see him, he is now on the rear of that number 78 car as they complete lap number 4 here at Donington Park, riding on board with Simon Holbert coming back down in towards turn number 1, last time by for Holbert a 1 minute 44.833 about 3 tenths of a second off of his fastest lap of the race last time by for Povey a 1 minute 44.772 Down the field, Mark Mercy is still involved in that epic battle with Dominic Brennan. Whilst these two are battling, though, it is allowing just a little bit. Clive Armstrong to try to drive away. He can get a couple of car lengths out, but then, as these two get themselves back into the draft, it does close back down as we go on board once again with Mark Mercer in that number 33 car as they work themselves now down in towards turn number four. And I have to say that for Mark Mercer, he is stuck in a little bit of traffic. It's actually just ahead of him. There is a very close battle. And this is Richard Avery and George Lambert continuing their battle for P number seven on the racetrack. And um, George Lambert has a rear mirror full of Richard Avery right now. There's a gap of just two and a half terms for a second. They work themselves through the S's back down towards Melbourne once again. Now, will Avery be able to line up a pass? We have seen some people line up a pass down into Melbourne. It doesn't look as though that Avery is going to be close enough. He is going to try and look down to the inside. But the number 25 car of Richard Avery going down to the number inside of that number 31 car. Oh, George Lambert not able to get the job done. Will he try and do the crossover, though, as they work themselves down into the final corner? 
Well, we're having a look now for George Lambert, and there you can see just behind is Richard Avery. Avery has to stay in line for the time being, and he will remain in the eighth place on the racetrack. Just ahead of Lambert, however, is George Wiseman and Clark Williams, who are battling for P5 on the racetrack. That is your battle right now, and in the top 10, we have got plenty of battles on the racetrack. Having a look through the rear of the field, it seems to settle down a little bit further more, but Rob Green right now is involved in a battle with Cam, and these two guys continue to battle for P12 on the racetrack. Um, Alex Bassi running himself in 12th place, Rob Green running himself in the 13th position. There you can see, oh, spinning around there in that number 74 car. That is going to allow a number of drivers to go past that Infinity Esports car. Going to lose himself an absolute ton of positions. As a behind as well, I believe that is the number 82 car of Martin Mew going wide. Both those drivers had incidents. We'll see if we can get ourselves a replay of that. So then riding along board with Sam as he comes down towards the old hairpin. And this is where that car is going to step out on him. There you see. Just losing it. We'll get ourselves another look of that. But Sam having some big issues. And that dropped him about five places on the racetrack. So then let's get ourselves another look of this. As they work themselves down into turn number four. You see under braking car wiggling out on him. Spinning around, and then at the same time, you can see Martin Mew coming down into the corner, also getting himself all forms of run, running himself a little bit wide, but then he was actually able to get himself past that number 74 car, and there you see, he was able to get that job done, moving himself up into P17 on the racetrack, but it's still a difficult day, that's the third off track that Martin Mew has had so far in this event. Let's go back then to these battles continuing. It's actually something's happened. So Bastian Job has fallen down the field as we are going to get your pictures back there. You see it. Um, Sebastian Job has now fallen down into second place on the racetrack. Um, and he's also got Mark Jarvis right behind him as well. So something has happened to Sebastian Job because Simon Holbert is now classified as your overall race leader. We'll see if we can pick something up. We'll try and do it in a couple of moments time because right now Job is under insane pressure from Mark Jarvis. As these guys now battle for P3 on the racetrack. Jarvis thinking about looking down to the inside of Job. Not going to do it this time by. But this is now going to be an epic battle for P1, 2, 3, 4, 5 on the racetrack. They are all separated by less than Three seconds on the racetrack as a little bit further back. Looking down to the inside, George Lambert right along board with him over uh, George Wiseman. George Lambert down into the sixth place on the racetrack. Actually running a little bit wide there. That's going to allow Richard Avery the chance to look down to the inside as they work themselves down into Melbourne. There you can see from the rear camera. Avery, is he going to try and select down the inside? The answer to that question is going to be yes, because George Lambert runs very wide for that corner, but will then get the cut under done. He'll be out of the outside line down into the final corner. There you see your dream racing car, the number 25 machine of Avery on the inside. Uh, Avery is going to be able to hold him, George Lambert, off, and that will put Lambert down into seventh place on the racetrack. A little bit further back, John Maycock has just made a pass. He goes wide, spinning it around down at the final corner. Jonathan Maycock, just after gaining a position in that number 100 car, now is going to be down a little bit further. He's falls down into the 17th position on the racetrack. See if we can get a replay. So this is coming down towards the final corner. There you see Maycock involved in a battle. Coming down into that final corner. Number 100 car on the right-hand side of your screen. Number 22 car on the left-hand side. Just under braking. Maycock locks up, spins that car around, losing himself a ton of positions. Richard Avery still running himself in sixth place, but it is now this guy, Simon Holbert, who leads away. And there's the gap between himself and Sebastian Job. It is six tenths of a second. There you see your top four or five cars. All oh, mighty close. Gap between Job and Javis. Is, sorry, Jarvis is one second on the racetrack. And then behind them, you will see Clark Williams about four tenths of a second back. And then running out your top five 
is George Wiseman right now in the number 24 machine all over the rear of Clark Williams. They are your top five as it stands, but the action keeps on getting intense here as we're riding on board now with Clark Williams running himself in that fourth position in that number 98 car. And here comes Williams down into that final corner. But Sebastian Job is looking mighty, mighty racy right now. As he is now just within two tenths of a second of your overall leader going on board with Sebastian Job. Will he look down to the inside? A little bit of a wiggle under braking, but he holds on to it. Stays in second place for the time being. Ellis Stevens, by the way, has had a moment and is dropping down the field. So he's still on board with Sebastian Jobs. He'll work himself through Craners once again. And then he's going to see actually Job trying to peek his car down to the inside as they come down into the old hairpin. Not the conventional place to make a pass. It's both him and Holber both running on the Astro turf. Six laps to go. The next time they come past the start finish line. But Sebastian Job trying to get redemption, get, trying to get that pass back, which he lost a little bit earlier on. A little bit further back, Rob Green is involved in a battle right now with Peter Cohen, as these guys are battling for P11 on the racetrack, riding along board with Rob Green in 13th place right now, trying to get 12th place away from Peter Cohen. Much better run out the corner there for Rob Green, but not going to have that inside line just yet. You can see him dancing to the left, then dancing to the right. Not able to do under braking this time, but much better under braking. This could be his opportunity, though, if he can get himself a good run out of coppice. You can see already trying to line himself down to the inside. 99 going to make it hard for him as they work themselves down towards the S's. Will Rob Green be able to break later than the number 99 car of Cohen? The answer to that one is going to be no. And I've just locked back into line for the time being, but gets a much better run out of the S's. This will give him the outside line down into Melbourne. We have seen a number of people making passes down into Melbourne, but it doesn't look as though Rob Green's going to try and do that. Potentially, he might actually try and do the crossover. Uh, as you see, now he's going to get that crossover and he will move himself up one position. Have the outside line, though, into the next corner, so he will have to pay attention to that, but able to get clear. Rob Green up into 12th place on the racetrack. Losing that, actually, just as I say that, as Cohen's going to try and go deep into the corner. That's not going to work, though, because Green's going to come back down to the inside, and he will get that position back as they come down into turn number one. Once again, great battling between Rob Green and Peter Cohen. There you can see the gap. It is literally nothing on the racetrack right now, as Cohen will come back down to the inside. We remain side by side in this battle for P12 on the racetrack as... Rob Green falling back down into 13th place. And he's going to have to do all of that work again. Meanwhile, your battle for the race lead. There you can see it. Simon Holbert at the top of your screen. Sebastian Job in second. Mark Javis in third. Clark Williams in the fourth position. And then just at the rear, there you can see George Wiseman. Those top five drivers will get confirmation. There you see just 1.7 seconds separating your top five drivers on the racetrack right now. And there you can see, actually we'll have to go away from this one because Sebastian Job's looking down to the inside and he's going to get that pass done. Sebastian Job moves back to the race lead. We'll get ourselves a replay because Sebastian Job back to your racing at the same time. You can see Mark Job is also looking down to the inside right now as they come down into Melbourne and Jarvis very late on the brakes there. But he's able to move up ahead of Simon Holbert, Mark Jarvis, mark up a position. We need to get ourselves a couple of replays. So then let's start by having a look at Sebastian Job because this was done down into the S's right on board with Sebastian Job. And you can see this pass was set up all the way through Coppice as he now leads the way as he comes down into Coppice. You see a much better run through the center of the corner. That will set himself up nicely. Running himself a little bit wide. He's in that curb on the outside line. Getting right into that slipstream. Then he'll move himself down to that left-hand side. The number 44 car going to give him the line. Making it very easy for Sebastian Job. Coming down into the S's. It's single file through there. He moves up one position. Get another look of that. And then what we'll do is we'll have a flick back to show you what happened. That's a little bit further back, but there you can see great angle. Sebastian Job coming down into the S's, able to make that move down to the inside, and he is able to take first place away. And then what you have to do is go back to look directly to Mark Jarvis. 
coming down into Melbourne corner. Jarvis gets that inside line from Simon Holbert, losing two corners in as many positions. And there you see, there was the contact which damaged the front wing of that number 44 car. We didn't see it originally, but we need to have a look from Mark Jarvis. You see, he comes down into the corner and then he breaks as late as he can, almost runs over Sebastian Job, then just locks up that brakes clips the front wing of the number 44 car, drives up into second, but damages Simon Holbert is actually Holbert has just actually now been able to take that position back. So then five laps to go. Holbert moves himself back up into second position to run through your top five. It is job from Holbert, from Jarvis, and Williams and Wiseman. The rest of your top ten. Lambert, Brennan, Armstrong, Povey, and Mercia. Richard Avery runs in 11th. Peter Cohen in 12th. Rob Green, Jonathan Maycock, and Alan Jeffrey round out your top 15 right now. A couple of retirees. We'll talk about them a little bit later on. Ellis Stevens, now McBride, out of the race. We've also got Sam out of the race. And Robert Plumney classified as out of the race. Dominic Brennan involved in a really close battle right now. There you can see him in that number 20 car. There you can see George Lambert just... There, there you can see how close it is. George Lambert, Dominic Brennan, just two tenths of a second. Lambert is losing some tire grip right now. That is allowing Dominic Brennan to be all over the rear of him as they work themselves. A little bit too wide racing actually going on behind them as well. This is Simon Povey right along board with him. Uh, Simon Povey is going to try and go down to the inside there of that number 37 machine. He makes that pass stick. Moving himself up one position. That was over Clive Armstrong there. We've got a car, pretty much all four tyres on the grass. That was a number 33 car. And Mark Mercier trying to go now around the outside. And will he get that job done We're right along board with Mark Mercier? There you can see that number 37 car on the right-hand side of your screen. Coming down into the S's, Mercier will have that inside line. Hornet Racing Car, number 37 machine, is going to have to lend past losing two positions, potentially, because now they're going to be side by side with Cohen, uh, sorry, Clive Armstrong, Richard Avery. Avery will get that pass done, as well as a little bit of contact. We just saw it on our screen there, coming down into Melbourne Corner. Let's see if we can get ourselves a replay of that up. So, all action going on in the mid-pack. There you can see the battle with Avery coming out of that corner just ahead of him. We'll see if we can zoom in on this because the number 78 car, Simon Povey, just almost making contact there, that 2-1-2 two -two car, as they almost went free wide through Melbourne corner. Thankfully, we were able to get out of that one without any further incident. But then just ahead, two wide racing, Dominic Brennan and George Lambert continuing to battle for what is essentially sixth place on the racetrack right now. We'll cut back to live footage because Simon Holbert, Mike Jarvis, uh, continuing their gap. By the way, um, whilst all of this is going on, there you see P2, 3, 4, and 5 on the racetrack. Whilst that is all going on, Sebastian Job is now starting to pull away. 2.5 seconds was the gap that time. Guys, we'll just get a picture of our aerial view. There you see Sebastian Job is our race leader, but then... You'll go back to Mark Jarvis running himself in second position. There you can see the battles going on on the racetrack as a good run that time by for Simon Holbert. He's going to look down to the inside. Holbert is going to try and set himself up to make a pass. Let's ride a long board with Holbert as he comes down into the corner. Let's flick our camera the right way round. Holbert not able to make the move down into the S's, but he will get a good run out of that corner. That could set himself up for a move down into Melbourne corner. That's the damage we talked about earlier in the rear of the number 14 car, which involved the front wing of Simon Holbert's car. Holbert not able to make the move down into Melbourne, but will he be able to get a run down into that final corner? These guys continuing to scrap, and that last time by a alone, um, Sebastian Job was able to eke out two seconds over these pack of drivers. So there are now just three laps remaining in this event and Job has taken off. It is now 4.7 seconds the advantage between Job and Jarvis who runs in second place still in this event. So we're having a look from the rear of Mark Jarvis down in towards turn number one once again and Jarvis is under all forms of pressure. I think that damage really is hurting him as they work themselves through craners once again and down to the inside will look Simon Holbert not going to be quite close enough to make the move that time by. 
So there you see, you've now down to three cars in this pack. The front one of them is Mark Jarvis. Gap between himself and Simon Holbert is pretty much nothing. Here comes Holbert down to the inside, and he is not going to make that job done that time. But as well, himself on the exit of the corner. What a pass there. Simon Holbert back up into P2 on the racetrack. A tremendous pass by him, getting himself up into second position. And now you must argue he might be able to pull away. But what a good pass there by Simon Holbert. Let's get a replay of that. You can just see how much more momentum he carried on the outside of the corner there. Able to move himself up into P2. Simon Holbert, what a good lap by him. What a good way of setting up that pass as well. We'll get one more look at that as they work themselves. Um, Simon Holbert gets himself just a, such a good run on the outside of the corner. This is Darkies Bridge down into McLean's. We'll just move our camera back. And there you can see what a great exit. From McLean's there for Simon Holbert, able to get himself up one place, up into P2 once again. Holbert hasn't been able to pull away as what we thought it was going to be. Last lap, the little white flag is out, one more lap to go. Jarvis down into third place overall, but this guy, Sebastian Job, is your leader. He did lead at the start of this event, then... He fell down. We'll have to figure out what the incident was with Sebastian Job after the race. But he was able to get himself back into position. And he now has himself a 7 second lead over Simon Holbert who continues to run in that second spot. There you can see that battle for P2, P3, P4, P5 on the racetrack. As we have a look from the rear of Simon Holbert to Mark Jarvis as they work themselves down. Down. A uh, couple of corners for them left to go. There are some battles still going on on the racetrack as well. We have got Richard Avery involved in a great battle. Clive Armstrong, Derm. They are too wide, too deep as they work themselves through this section of the racetrack. Great stuff right now. So we'll get our aerial coverage up there. But it is the 2 on 2 car, Dominic Brenner, who leads away. They remain too wide behind him. As there you can see the 37 with car on the left hand side of your screen. The right hand side of your screen is. Sorry, now it's Richard Avery on the left hand side 37 on the right hand side they're going to be too wide coming down into the s's but for sebastian job there you see he works himself down in towards melbourne for the final time just one more corner now for him to go he's been absolute dominant in this event the battle with brennan and avery will come back to that in just one moment's time because sebastian job will work himself out of that final corner for the final time he will take victory here at donington park the third round of the championship goes to that man, Sebastian Job. Second place battle is going to be Holbert who takes it. Then it's going to be Jarvis in third. Fourth place, Clark Williams. Fifth place, George Wyatt. And behind it, Simon Povey. There you see him, the rear of your screen, coming home in P6. Then George Lambert, Mark Mercier, Dominic Brennan, all involved in a great battle at the end of this race. We are going to have a look to see exactly what happened with that battle the last lap because that was an absolutely fascinating last lap for some of these drivers. But let's keep an eye out then. These last lap of the race, there you can see six cars pretty much separated by nothing on the racetrack. And we'll have a look at our aerial coverage to try and explain this one to you. See, car going off first. That was Richard Avery losing himself two positions as they work themselves through craners once again. Then a little bit of contact there with Dominic Brennan as ahead. The field just starts to get mighty close as um, one of those cars, that was a number 33 car, Mark Mercy going off. That really wads this field up. Then just ahead, you can see, getting themselves into two wide, two deep formation. Dominic Brennan, the number 31 car, involved in that one as well. The 31 car going around the outside, that was George Lambert. He would come out the victor out of this battle. Um, but at this point in time, Dominic Brennan was leading the way as we'll have a look now just for one moment and then they work themselves down towards the S's and then this is where things get really crazy so they come down into the S's then you'll see it all starts going on the outside that number 25 car tries to look they're not going to get that job done then it's going to be like last lap dash down towards the Melbourne corner 
and you can see drivers trying to take every piece of the racetrack they can. Look for two wide racing, look for almost three wide racing down into Melbourne. No contact, thankfully. All of those guys survive without contact, but they get back wadded up into a two wide, two deep situation almost. Dominic Brandon coming down into the last corner, looking as though he might be able to hold on. That number 25 car right behind him into that final corner. There you can see he just slots it down to the inside, a dash to the line. Dominic Brandon is able, though, to hold on. Um, to that group and he will take a well-deserved set of points out of that one but what a great race we had there and what a great run to the flag for those mid-pack drivers so then ladies and gentlemen we are going to show you your final race results and it is Sebastian Job who takes victory here today in that number in that car fastest lap for him a 1 minute 44.097 then coming home in second place is Simon Holbert in third place Mark Jarvis fourth place Clark Williams then George Wiseman in fifth Simon Povey sixth Dominic Brennan Richard Avery George Lambert and Clive Armstrong round out your top 10. On to page two, Mark Mercer in 11th, Peter Cohen 12th, Rob Green, Jonathan Maycock, Alan Jeffrey, Fahim Atanides, Bobby West, Martin Mew, Tim Adcock and Alan Patterson ran out your top 20. And you can see a total of 25 cars finished on the lead lap here today. Everyone who finished, finished on the lead lap. Your retirees, Peter Newman, Neil Goodacre, um, Sam Bolisbassi. Ellie Stevens, Nile McBride, Chris Fraser, Free Did Not Start, Robert Plumney, Graham Carroll, and Gary Feekins. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll stop aside for just one moment's time, then we'll be back with final thoughts and potentially some post race interviews here from Donington Park. Stick with us. The NASCAR Peak Antifreeze Series, powered by iRacing.com, has officially begun. It's all in control of Brad Davies in that 11 machine. Green flag flies. He's damn near banged up, though. Now the 93 is going to push the four of Brian Day all the way up the wall. Four wide down the super stretch point. And now the 93 39, the three machine goes around. Big trouble in the back. It's been a race for the win up front. Look behind him. There's three and four wide trying to make a push to the front. As the field gains speed in turn number one. Kenny Humphrey, if he can rip it back to the start finish line, will win here at Daytona. Seven left. Oh, oh as you love baby, it. Here we go. You love it. The number one gets around. The five gets around. Big, big jump.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to post-race coverage here from Donington Park, the third round of the 2014 Season 3 Club UK and Ireland Skip Barber Championship here on Racebot TV, powered by And One Design. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, you can follow me on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash I am Will Vincent. Also, you can follow me on Twitter as well, at Will Vincent. To run through your final race results, it was... Sebastian Job taking victory here today by eight seconds when all was said and done. Over Simon Holbert and Mark J was coming home in the third position. Clark Williams in fourth place. Then it is George Wiseman who rounds out your top five. Run through the rest of your top ten. Simon Povey in sixth. Dominic Brennan in seventh. Richard Avery in eighth. George Lambert in ninth. And then Clive Armstrong rounds out your top ten. To run through the rest of your top 20 is Mark Mercer in 11th, Peter Cohen in 12th, Rob Green in 13th, Jonathan Maycock in 14th, Alan Jeffrey, Fahim Antonides, Bobby West, Martin Mew, Tim Adcock and Alan Patterson. They round out your top 20 here today and here are your final 14 drivers. Rich Strange, Luke Ridgway, Sam Avarice, Gavin Rong and Murray A. Coote are your final finishers. 25 drivers finishing the race here today at Donington Park. And then you've got yourself Peter Newman, Neil Goodacre, uh, um, Sam Belus Bassi, Ellis Stevens, Noel McBride. And then finally, the last of the drivers who finished this race or started this race, Chris Fraser in 31st. Three drivers did a DNS. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, Racebot TV is your official home of the 2014 iRacing.com World Championship Grand Prix Series. The next round of the championship taking place on August 30th as drivers head for the second time this season to the Autodromo Jose Carlos Passe, better known, of course, as Interlagos, as they once again take on one of the most grueling racetracks in all of Grand Prix racing. The next round of the NASCAR Peak Antifree Series, powered by iRacing.com, will take place 9 p.m. Eastern Time on August 26th, as drivers will head to Atlanta Motor Speedway, as they will take on over 150 laps around the 1.5 mile oval, with 24 degrees of banking. Join that one on iRacing Live, MRN, the Motor Racing Network, and PSR TV. We'll, of course, be back next Monday. It'll be August Bank Holiday weekend, so it'll be some great fun here on Racebot TV. And, of course, we are going to have Friday Night Indy Cars as well. They head over to the fourth round of the championship at Sonoma. Think outside of the Oval. That will be this Friday. Start time for that will be 8 p.m. GMT. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for being a part of our coverage here today on Racebot TV. You will see you same time, same place for the fourth round of the championship. This has been a Racebot TV presentation of the club UK and Ireland Skip Barber Championship. For myself, Will Vincent, we will talk to you all next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.